lecture. These are the learning objectives. Learning objectives for today's lecture. Uh, at the end of this lecture, the third year MBBS, MBBS student should be able to describe the congenital congenital anomalies of the gallbladder, explain the morphology and pathogenesis of the cholelithiasis, describe morphology, gross and microscopic uh, description of the acute cholecystitis and chronic cholecystitis, explain morphology and pathogenesis of biliary atresia and discuss etiology, morphology, pathogenesis, gross and histopathology. So we have got some clinical scenarios and uh, during the next one hour we are going to find out the answers to these clinical scenario first is, is a 48 year old woman with a history of gallstones present to the clinic complaining of a one day history of uh, nausea, vomiting and abdominal pain. The abdominal pain is severe and steady, localized to epigastric and right upper quadrant region of her abdomen. Her vital signs are notable for a temperature of 101 degree Fahrenheit and you note inspiratory arrest on right upper quadrant palpation. Then there is another scenario in which a 60 year old Native American woman present with 3 day history of severe right upper quadrant pain. On history she has given birth to 5 children post menopausal and is currently taking hormone replacement therapy. The pain is exacerbated after she, she takes her grandchildren out for a fast food and indulges in greasy food it's herself she also confesses that she does drink quite a bit on the weekend and feels abdominal pain shortly afterward as well then there is another scenario in which a 52 years old woman present to the clinic with epigastric and right upper quadrant pain which is especially severe after a fatty meal. She also reports that her appetite has decreased and that she has lost about 10 pounds over last month. Physical examination reveal a fever of 102 degree Fahrenheit, jaundice and scleral terrace. An ultrasound is suggestive of cholecystitis and a cholecystectomy is The gallbladder is a thin elongated sac about 8 cm long and about 50 ml in volume. It is present in a fossa on the inferior surface of the liver between the right and quadrate lobe. It develops from the same foregut diverticulum that give rise to the liver. It has the fundus, body, neck and it attached to the common hepatic duct through cystic duct that is 3 cm in length. Its function is storage, concentration and release of bile and uh, the bile from the common hepatic duct goes through the cystic duct into the gallbladder where it is concentrated, is stored and finally secreted into common bile duct through the hormonal action of cholecystokinin that induces the contraction of the muscle of the gallbladder. About 1 liter of the bile is produced by the liver per day and uh, this concentration and storage function happens between the meal. However, the gallbladder is not essential for biliary function as no indigestion or malabsorption of fat occur after cholecystectomy. Unlike the rest of the JIT, the gallbladder lacks the muscularis mucosa and submucosae. The wall of the gallbladder is composed of four layers that are mucosal layer, a smooth muscle layer, perimuscular layer and serosal layer. The mucosal layer has a single layer of tall columnar epithelium which is thrown into uh, numerous 
permanent folds that are larger and more numerous in the neck of the gallbladder. Beneath the epithelium is present a delicate lamina propria and it contains capillaries and in the region of the neck few SNR glands are also present. The smooth muscle layer is present just underneath this mucosal layer and it is composed of smooth muscle bundles in three layers. One is the inner longitudinal, the middle one is the oblique and the outer circular smooth muscles. Outer to the muscular layer is the zone of fibrous connective tissue with some interspersed fat cells and beneath this perimuscular layer is the serosal layer and uh, the peritoneum covers the gallbladder except in the region of the gallbladder fossa where it is embedded in the gall in the within the liver the extra hepatic bile ducts are also lined by tall columnar epithelial cells and uh, these are surrounded by dense layer of fibromuscular tissue. The duct that uh, lie between the lobules of the liver and receive bile from the canaliculi are lined by cuboidal or flattened cells. The pathologies of the gallbladder affect a significant proportion of the world's population and 95% uh, of the diseases of gallbladder are cholelithiasis and uh, it accounts for about 95% of the gallbladder disease and affect 20 million people in USA uh, and for this about uh, 700,000 cholecystectomies are done per annum which creates a burden of about 6 billion dollars to the economy. The gallbladder pathologies can be categorized as congenital anomalies, gallbladder disorder, extrahepatic bile duct disorder and tumors. The common congenital anomalies are absence, bilobed gallbladder, duplication, aberrant location, phrygian cap and duct agenesis while the gallbladder disorders are cholelithiasis, cholestrosis and cholecystitis which can be further divided into acute and chronic and calculus and acalculus and then the extra hepatic bile duct disorders cholidocolithiasis, cholangitis, biliary atresia and cholidocolcyst. Then tumors, there are many tumors such as benign tumors are polyps or papilloma but the commonest tumor of the uh, gallbladder is the adenocarcinoma. The gallbladder may be congenitally absent or there may be a presence of bilobed gallbladder with the presence of uh, transverse septum or longitudinal longitudinal septum or presence of multiple septi. There may be duplication of the gallbladder with conjoined cystic duct or independent cystic duct and uh, the conjoined cystic duct uh, entity is termed as vesica divisa and uh, the independent cystic duct uh, duplication is termed as vesica failure duplex. Another congenital anomaly is the aberrant location of the gallbladder which is present in 5 to 10 percent of the population and in most of the cases the, cases, the gallbladder is embedded within the substance of the liver either partially or completely. The much more common entity is, is phrygian cap and this phrygian cap is basically named after the Turkish cap that was uh, uh, worn by the Turks in around uh, 1000 AD and uh, in this entity the gallbladder fundus is folded so this picture is showing a normal gallbladder with velvety dark green mucosa and thin wall this uh, golden arrow is pointing towards the bulbous uh, projection 
that is known as phrygian cap another congenital anomaly is duct agenesis in which there is non development of all or any portion of the hepatic or common bile duct and uh, hypoplastic narrowing of the biliary channel such that uh, is uh, true biliary atresia the bile duct anomalies include duplication and accessory bile duct presence the congenital bile duct dilatation are termed as colidocal cyst with that are present in 85% of all the cases of anomalies of the bile duct anomalies colidocal diverticula or colidocal seal are also uh, another congenital anomalies multiple cyst may occur as segmental dilatation in the entire extrahepatic biliary tree similar multiple dilations in the intrahepatic biliary tree are termed as caroli disease that predispose to bacterial cholangitis more than 95% of the biliary tract diseases are gallstones and uh, it affect 10 to 20% of adult population in high income countries it is estimated that more than 20 million persons in the us have gallstone totaling 25 to 50 tons in weight uh, about 700 cholis 700000 cholecystectomies are performed per annum that create a health burden uh, health budget burden of about six billion dollars the stones within the gallbladder is termed as cholelithiasis the presence of a stone within the uh, hepatic duct or uh, within the liver ducts is termed as hepatolithiasis and the common bile duct stones are termed as cholelithiasis the gallstones are of two types one is the cholesterol stone and another are the pigment stone the cholesterol stones are more prevalent in the united states and western europe while these are uncommon in developing countries more than 50 percent of the these stones contain crystalline cholesterol monohydrate and these stones are more common in native americans of pima hopi and navajo group and 75% uh, of the people are affected by the age of uh, 25 years and 90% by the age of 60 years the pigment stones are rare in these populations at autopsy for more than 75 year old dead bodies these stones were found in 20% uh, of the male population and 35% of the female population while the pigment stones contain bilirubin calcium salts and these are predominant in non-western population they arise predominantly in the setting of bacterial infection of the biliary tree and parasitic infestation there are many risk factors for the gallstone development and uh, the age and sex are one of these the prevalence of the gallstone increases throughout the life but uh, these gallstones are more common in middle and older age group and these are common after the age of 40 years these uh, gallstones are increased in female in any region or any ethnicity while uh, these uh, are about twice as common than men in caucasian women the hypersecretion of biliary cholesterol is uh, linked with uh, these uh, factors and uh, metabolic syndrome and obesity are also associated with the gallstone formation then environmental factor one of the environmental factor is the estrogenic influence and uh, these gallstones are thrice as common in premenopausal uh, women than in men of that age the oral contraceptive and pregnancy uh, both uh, have got estrogenic influence and uh, there is increased expression of hepatic lipoprotein receptor that stimulate 
hepatic HMG CoA reductase activity and increases both cholesterol uptake and its biosynthesis. The net result is excessive biliary secretion of cholesterol that result in the stone formation, cholesterol stone formation. The clofibrate is an agent that is used to lower the blood cholesterol. It increases hepatic HMG CoA reductase and also decreases conversion of the cholesterol to the bile acid by decreasing the cholesterol 7-alpha uh, hydroxyl oxidase activity and the net result of these influences is increased biliary secretion of the cholesterol that predisposes the individual to the cholelithiasis. Obesity and rapid weight loss are strongly associated with increased uh, biliary cholesterol secretion hence they are linked with the cholelithiasis. Other risk factors for the cholelithiasis are acquired disorder that are the neurogenic or hormonal gallbladder stasis that fosters a local environment which is favorable for both cholesterol and pigment gallstone formation. The hereditary factors uh, are also linked with the cholelithiasis. The scientists recently focused on identifying susceptibility factor for cholesterol gallstones that led to the identification of association of hepatocyte protein that transport biliary lipids. These are known as ATP binding cassettes protransporters and uh, the ATP binding cassette G5 and G2 genes encode a protein heterodimer that participate in biliary cholesterol secretion. This is uh, known as D19H variant and 8 to 11 percent risk of cholesterol in for, uh, stone formation is associated with this D19H variant. The individuals with this variant absorb less but synthesize more cholesterol. The HMG CoA inhibitors such as statin may decrease the risk of cholesterol formation in these individuals. ATP binding acid G8 gene encodes a common variant of the stroll transporter and associated with increased risk of cholesterol gallstone. So this table is from the Robbins and this is summarizing the risk factors that are associated with gallstone formation. The cholesterol stones formation risk, risk factors are demographic, advancing age, exposure to the female sex hormone, obesity, metabolic syndrome, rapid weight reduction, uh, gallbladder stasis, inborn disorder of bile acid metabolism, hyperlipidemia syndrome, while the pigment stones are, are more common in Asian as compared to the western and they are more common in rural area than the urban. And these pigment stones are associated with the chronic hemolytic anemia, biliary infection and gastrointestinal disorders such as ileal disease, chronic disease, uh, ileal resection or bypass cystic fibrosis with pancreatic insufficiency. The cholesterol is kept in uh, soluble condition by the action of the biliary salt and lecithin that act as detergent and uh, they keep it in soluble form and when the cholesterol concentration increases and uh, it exceeds from the solubilizing capacity of the bile and uh, this is termed as supersaturation and when it is supersaturated the cholesterol can no longer remain dispersed because the neutralizing capacity of uh, these bile salt and lecithin is decreased so uh, the cholesterol can no longer remain dispersed and nucleate into solid cholesterol monohydrate crystals. Four mechanisms uh, appear to contribute to the formation of cholesterol gallstone. One is the supersaturation of the bile with cholesterol. 
hypomotility of the gallbladder, accelerated cholesterol crystal nucleation, and hypersecretion of the mucus in the gallbladder that traps the uh, nucleated crystals and that lead to accretion of more cholesterol and the appearance of macroscopic stones. The formation of cholesterol stone uh, within the gallbladder may be due to two mechanisms. One is the increased secretion of the cholesterol within the bile and another is the decreased uh, formation of the bile salt. And this decreased bile salt formation may be due to de decreased uh, cholesterol 7 alpha hydro hydroxylase activity. And uh, these, both these factors, they result in supersaturation of the bile, and hence the nidus are formed for the gall stone. And finally, morphologically uh, uh, detectable stones are formed. Estrogen increases hepatic secretion of cholesterol and decreases the secretion of bile salts. Bile uh, salts. Hence, the this is linked with the gallstone formation. The progesterone, that is the major hormone of the pregnancy, inhibit discharge of the bile from the gallbladder. There are variety of conditions that are associated with increased cholesterol secretion that are increasing age, obesity, ethnicity, familial predisposition, diet that is high in calories and cholesterol and certain metabolic abnormalities associated with high blood cholesterol level such as uh, diabetes, genetic hyperlipoproteinemia etc. The decrease there are disorders that interfere with enterohepatic circulation of the bile acids such as pancreatic insufficiency in uh, cystic fibrosis or Crohn disease. They also decrease bile acid secretion and favor gallstone formation. The pigment stones are complex mixtures of abnormal insoluble calcium salts of unconjugated bilirubin along with inorganic calcium salts. The disorders that are associated with increased level of unconjugated bilirubin in bile are a risk for formation of pigment stone. These conditions are hemolytic syndrome, severe ileal dysfunction or bypass and bacterial contamination of the biliary tree. The secretion of conjugated bilirubin into the bile increases in hemolytic syndrome. However, because only 1% of the bilirubin gluconides are deconjugated in the biliary tree, the large amount of unconjugated bilirubin produced may exceed its solubility. Hence, the risk of pigment stone formation is increased. The bacterial contamination of the biliary tree is also a risk factor for the pigment stone formation because unconjugated bilirubin is normally a minor component of the bile but it increases when infection of the biliary tract is present that is uh, in the infection in the presence of infection there is release of beta glucuronidase from the microbes that hydrolyzes the bilirubin glucuronides The infections that are associated with these uh, biliary tract uh, pigment stones are Escherichia coli, Escherichia lambriquides, and Clonorchis sinensis. The pigment stones are divided into two varieties, black and brown pigment. The black variety is more uh, commonly seen in older people, undernourished people say with the cirrhosis and in the presence of chronic hemolysis while the brown brown pigment is associated with infections and chronic mechanical obstruction to bile flow. 
such as sclerosing cholangitis and uh, presence of common bile duct catheter after surgery. So we can summarize the factors that are associated with the gallstone formation into two major categories. One are the factors that affect bile composition and another are the factors that affect the motility of the gallbladder. The factors affecting the bile composition are stasis, cholesterol content and saturation, rate of bile formation, rate of water and electrolyte absorption, bacterial infection, nucleation of stone formation, prostaglandin and mucin production, estrogen and altered bile salt pool. While the factors that affect gallbladder motility are decreased in sphincter of OD relaxation, decreased gallbladder wall muscular contraction, hormones such as increased somatostatin, estrogen and decreased cholecystokinin and neural control that is the vagal tone. The cholesterol stones arise exclusively within the gallbladder and they are composed of cholesterol. Pure form of the cholesterol stone are rare while mixed form is common. The pure cholesterol stones are pale yellow round to ovoid with a finely granular hard external surface and on transection a glistening radiating crystalline palisade is seen. Uh, with increasing proportion of the calcium for carbonate, phosphatase and bilirubin, the stones show discoloration may be laminated and grey white to black in color. Most often multiple stones are present and these stones range from uh, several centimeters in diameter. The single stone is present rarely and if it is present, it is present in the fundus usually and it is of large size. Surf uh, surfaces of multiple stone may be rounded or faceted because they are tightly uh, opposed. The stones that are composed largely of cholesterol are radiolucent but the presence of calcium carbonate uh, if it is 10 to 20 percent uh, minimally it make them radio opaque. This is the gross picture of the uh, gallbladder. The gallbladder is cut open and the wall of the gallbladder is thickened and fibrotic. Uh, the lumen contains numerous multifaceted stones. Cholesterosis is also named as a strawberry gallbladder due to gross appearance of finely granular yellowish uh, streaks and uh, these are due to aggregates of lipid containing macrophages in the uh, lamina propria of the gallbladder. The supersaturated cholesterol that is present in the bile uh, diffuses into the mucosa and uh, here this cholesterol is present within the macrophages that are containing the cholesterol and a small eccentric nuclei. The black stones are present in a sterile gallbladder bile and they contain oxidized polymers of calcium salt of unconjugated bilirubin, a small amount of calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate and mucin glycoprotein. Some cholesterol monohydrate crystals are also in there. Uh, they measure less than 1 cm and rarely exceed more than 1.5 cm in diameter. They are present in great number with an inverse relationship between size and number and they are very soft and crumbled to the touch. Their contour is usually speculated and molded. These black stones are radioopaque and they contain 50 to 75 percent of the calcium carbonate and phosphates. So this picture is showing multifaceted multiple black stone that are present within the lumen of the gallbladder and these are due to uh, in this patient in this particular patient these are due to chronic intravascular hemolysis secondly to mechanical mitral valve prosthesis. 
the brown stones are present more commonly in infected intrahepatic or extrahepatic duct than that of uh, gallbladder and they contain pure calcium salts of unconjugated bilirubin, mucinic lycoprotein, cholesterol fraction and calcium salt of palmitate and stearate. Brown stain tend to be uh, laminated, spongy and soft and they have soap-like uh, soap or greasy consistency. They are radiolucent and the uh, mucinic lycoprotein is the scaffolding that is present uh, in almost all the pigment of cholesterol stone. This table is summarizing the characteristics of uh, gall stone. The cholesterol stones, uh, the pure gall stone are about 10% and they are cholesterol, pigment or calcium carbonate uh, stones and uh, the cholesterol stones are associated with cholestrosis and they are solitary oval large yellow white on uh, cut section the radiating glistening crystals are there the pile pigment uh, uh, is uh, shows no uh, change in the gallbladder wall and uh, the appearance of the stone is a small multiple jet black mulberry or shape or and on cross section these are soft and black the calcium carbonate crystals are multiple small gray white faceted and they are hard on cutting the commonest variety of a stone is the mix stone that comprises 80 percent of the stones and they are composed of cholesterol bile pigment and calcium carbonate in varying combination and uh, the chronic cholecystitis is the morphological change that is associated with this. The mixed stone are multiple, multifaceted, variable size and on cut section they are laminated with alternating dark pigment layer and pale white layer. The combined stones are, uh, uh, they account for about 10% of the uh, stones and they are also associated with chronic cholecystitis these combined stones are solitary large smooth and on cut section central nucleus of pure gold stone with mixed shell or vice versa so this is the uh, morphological appearance of various type of these stones we just discussed the combined pure calcium carbonate type of a stone, pure cholesterol stone, mixed stone that are multifaceted and multiple and pigment stone that are uh, very soft, friable and uh, crumble to touch and they are very uh, spongy in consistency. So what two chemicals are present within this gallbladder? These are bile and cholesterol. This is the uh, CT image uh, that is showing the single stone that is present within dilated gallbladder and this stone is showing laminated appearance while this CT of the gall dilated gallbladder is showing that there are multiple uh, stones that are present within this uh, uh, dilated gallbladder. The ultrasound is commonly used, uh, frequently used uh, diagnostic imaging technique for the diagnosis of uh, cholelithiasis. This red arrow is pointing towards the stones that are present within the lumen of the gallbladder while the yellow arrow is pointing towards the thickened wall of the gallbladder that is the common feature that is associated with chronic cholecystitis. The cholangiogram uh, is uh, showing the outline of a stone that is occluding the distal dilated common bile duct near the ampulla. The individuals with gallstone may remain asymptomatic uh, for decades and uh, 70 to 80 percent of the people they remain asymptomatic throughout their life and uh, 
the asymptomatic patient convert to symptomatic at the rate of 1 to 4 percent per year and the risk diminishes with the time. They may experience biliary pain that is excruciating and constant pain. Uh, sometimes it is termed as colicky pain but it is not actually colicky and this is a misnomer. The pain often follows a fatty meal that induces gallbladder contraction and this contraction presses the stone against the gallbladder outlet and uh, increases the pressure and eventually pain. This pain is localized to the upper quadrant uh, or, or uh, the epigastrium and may radiate to the right shoulder or to the back. The pain is also generated by inflammation. The complication of the cholelithiasis are empyema, perforation, fistula, cholangitis, obstructive cholestasis or pancreatitis. The small stones are more dangerous because they tend to obstruct the uh, biliary tract and Occasionally, a large stone may erode directly into an adjacent loop of a small bowel and uh, that generates intestinal obstruction and this is termed as Bovaritz syndrome. The cholelithiasis is uh, associated with increased risk of carcinoma of the gallbladder. Inflammation of the gallbladder is termed as cholecystitis. The types of the cholecystitis are acute, chronic and acute superimposed on chronic cholecystitis. The most common association is cholelithiasis or gallstones and epidemiology of this cholecystitis is similar to the cholelithiasis. Acute inflammation of the gallbladder is acute cholecystitis. The types of the acute cholecystitis are acute calculus cholecystitis and acute acalculus cholecystitis. The acute calculus cholecystitis is primary complication of the gallstone and it is precipitated by the obstruction of the neck or cystic duct <clears throat> in the 90% of the cases. And uh, this acute calculus cholecystitis is the most common reason for emergency cholecystectomy. A calculus cholecystitis is the presence of uh, inflammation of the gallbladder without gallstone and it is present in severely ill patient and accounts for about 10% of the cases. Now the pathogenesis of the acute calculus cholecystitis, the obstruction of the cystic duct results in chemical irritation and this is starts, this starts with the action of the mucosal phospholipases that convert luminal lecithin into toxic lysolecithins and due to these toxic lysolecithins there is disruption of the protective glycoprotein mucosal layer and now the mucosal epithelium is exposed to the direct detergent action of the pile salt hence there is injury to the epithelium by direct detergent action of the bile salts. So this will release the prostaglandin within local environment and there is <coughs> inflammation. Uh, inflammation within this uh, distended gallbladder will result in dysmotility, further distension and compromised blood supply to this organ. This happens in sterile environment initially but uh, later uh, the superimposed infection can develop. This acute calculus cholecystitis is common in diabetics uh, who have got uh, symptomatic gallstones.
the acute a calculus cholecystitis results from the ischemia of the cystic artery that is an n artery and the contributing factors uh, for the development of these are inflammation and edema of the wall that compromise the blood flow to this organ and stasis within the gallbladder and accumulation of the microcrystals of the cholesterol that is the biliary sludge formation also the viscous bile and uh, gallbladder mucus present the, all these factors lead to the obstruction of the cystic duct uh, this condition usually occurs in uh, acutely ill patients and the risk factors for this condition are sepsis with hypotension and multi-system organ failure uh, immunosuppression major trauma burn diabetes mellitus and infection for the morphology of the acute cholecystitis the gallbladder is enlarged about twice or thrice of its normal size and the wall is thickened it is uh, markedly thickened and it is about 10 times of the its uh, normal thickness the serosa is uh, covered by fibrin in severe cases and the uh, if there is presence of sub serosal hemorrhage due to compromise of the blood supply it will impart a green black color to the wall as is seen in this uh, lower picture the lumen of the gallbladder is filled with turbid bile fibrin or pus and the mucosa is hyperemic ulcerated or may be frankly necrotic in 80 percent of the cases gall stones are present and impacted in the neck of the gallbladder or within the cystic duct when there is a presence of this stone that is acute calculus cholecystitis if this condition occur without the uh, stone that is a calculus cholecystitis so this is the open gallbladder in the acute cholecystitis there is a striking mural thickening due to edema hemorrhage and inflammation and you can see that there is a impacted stone in the uh, neck region on histology the mucosa and wall display severe inflammatory changes and ulceration of the lining epithelium if the process continues there is progressive injury with deeper ulceration inflammation of the wall and disruption of the muscularis propria as is clear in this photomicrograph from the gallbladder this severe inflammation ultimately will lead to extensive necrosis and subsequently infection with gram positive rods when the exudate is purely pus the condition is called empyema gallbladder in more severe cases when the blood supply is compromised the gallbladder is converted into a green black necrotic organ and there can be a presence of uh, a small or large perforations the invasion of the gas forming organisms such as cholestatia and uh, coliforms will result in uh, presence of air within the wall that is termed as emphysematous cholecystitis other complications of acute cholecystitis are perforation bile peritonitis pericholecystic abscess and cholecystenteric fistula formation for the clinical features of acute calculus cholecystitis there is a history of previous episodes of pain related to the gallbladder and uh, the acute attack begins with progressive right upper quadrant or epigastric uh, pain that lasts for more than six hours there can be mild fever anorexia tachycardia sweating nausea vomiting and most patients are free of the jaundice and uh, if there is obstruction of the common bile duct that will result in hyperbilirubinemia and uh, there is uh, mild to moderate leukocytosis 
and mild uh, increase in serum alkaline phosphatase. The attack of acute calculus cholecystitis may appear suddenly and it is an acute surgical emergency or it may present with mild symptom that resolve without uh, medical intervention. In the absence of medical inter attention, the attack usually subsides within 7 to 10 days and frequently it may subside within 24 hours. 25% of the patients they develop uh, severe symptoms and need immediate surgical intervention. If uh, gallbladder is not removed surgically, recurrence of this condition is common. The clinical features for acute acalculus cholecystitis, uh, the symptoms are uh, more insidious and uh, these are obscured by underlying condition precipitating the attack and higher proportion of the patient have no symptom referable to the gallbladder. Diagnosis of this condition therefore rests on high index of suspicion. If uh, the clinician fails to identify this condition it will result in fatal outcome so the early recognition is crucial in severely ill patient if diagnosis is delayed it will result in gangrene and perforation of the organ rarely salmonella typhi and staphylococci infection also result in the a calculus cholecystitis acutely a more indolent form of acute a calculus cholecystitis occurs in outpatient population with systemic vasculitis severe atherosclerotic ischemic disease and elderly patient with autoimmune deficiency syndrome and biliary tract infections the chronic cholecystitis is the most common disease of the gallbladder. It may uh, present as a sequel to uh, repeated uh, episodes of mild to severe acute cholecystitis or, in, or it may present without any precedent uh, attack of the cholecystitis. It is associated with stones in more than 90% of the cases. So the patient population and epidemiology is same as for the gallstone. So the evaluation of this disease, the chronic cholecystitis is obscure and there is egg or chicken mystery. It is not clear whether the stone is the cause of the chronic inflammation or chronic inflammation result in the development of stone. It, it is evident because the symptoms and histology of both the a calculus and calculus form of the chronic cholecystitis are almost same the chronic cholecystitis results after the supersaturation of the bile that uh, is associated with chronic inflammation and stone formation in one third of the cases enterococci and e coli are also responsible for the development of chronic cholecystitis unlike acute calculus cholecystitis obstruction of the gall gallbladder outflow is not required for the development of chronic cholecystitis the biliary symptoms often emerge following long-term coexistence of a stone and low-grade inflammation the symptoms of acute and chronic cholecystitis are almost similar. The symptoms of, uh, often range from biliary colic to indolent right upper quadrant pain and epigastric distress. Morphologically, the cases of chronic cholecystitis the, are extremely variable and sometimes minimal change is seen. The serosa is uh, usually smooth and glistening or it may be dulled by subserosal fibrosis. There is presence of dense fibrous adhesion due to pre-existing uh, acute inflammation. 
and uh, when suctioned the wall is thickened with opaque gray white appearance uncomplicated cases of chronic cholecystitis show a fairly clear green, green yellow mucoid bile and stones uh, within the lumen the mucosa is itself or generally preserved the histology of chronic cholecystitis is uh, variable and depending on the degree of inflammation in the mild cases only scattered lymphocytes plasma cells and macrophages are seen within the mucosa and subserosal fibrous tissue while in advanced cases there is marked subepithelial and subserosal fibrosis that is accompanied by mononuclear cell infiltration outpouching of the mucosal epithelium through the wall may be a quite prominent feature of uh, this chronic cholecystitis and this outpouching of the mucosal epithelium uh, within the wall is termed as rokitansky ashof sinuses superimposition of the superimposition of the acute inflammatory change implies acute exacerbation of an already chronically injured gallbladder and this is termed as acute on chronic variety of cholecystitis then there is another term that is porcelain gallbladder and this porcelain gallbladder is a rare condition that is due to extensive dystrophic calcification within the wall of the gallbladder and recognition of this condition is important because uh, this has increased uh, tendency to develop cancer so this is the gross appearance of the gallbladder termed as porcelain gallbladder because the wall and surface of the gallbladder are hard and tan white like a porcelain vase there is another condition that is hyalinizing cholecystitis in which there is complete replacement of the gallbladder wall and mucosa by dense fibrosis there is a markedly increased incidence of associated cancer sometimes the uh, stone is impacted near the neck or in the cystic duct so it uh, is chronically obstructed so uh, this chronically obstructed atrophic gallbladder may contain clear secretions only this condition is termed as hydrops of the gallbladder the cholestrosis of the gallbladder is the accumulation of cholesterol laden macrophages in the submucosa it reflects the super saturation of the bile with cholesterol and does not ordinarily uh, cause symptom so uh, this gross picture is the wall of the gallbladder that is showing the scattered yellow reticulated uh, reticulated appearance of the yellow flakes and this is termed as a strawberry gallbladder the mucosal folds are swollen and uh, uh, these swollen folds histologically they contain large foamy macrophages in which a small nucleus is displaced uh, to the periphery the clinical features of the chronic cholecystitis are recurrent attack of either steady or colicky epigastric or right upper quadrant pain with nausea vomiting and intolerance to fatty food complications of the acute and chronic cholecystitis are bacterial super infection with cholangitis or sepsis perforation of the gallbladder or formation of a local abscess diffuse peritonitis as a result of rupture of the gallbladder or cholecystenteric fistula or biliary enteric fistula formation with drainage of the bile into the adjacent organs entry of the air and bacteria into the biliary artery and potentially gallstone induced uh, intestinal obstruction aggravation of the pre-existing medical illness with cardiac pulmonary renal or liver de decompensation biliary atresia represent uh, one third of the infant with neonatal cholestasis it is common in approximately one per 12000 life births there is complete or partial obstruction of the lumen of extrahepatic biliary artery 
within first three months of the life, progressive inflammation and fibrosis of the intrahepatic or extrahepatic bile duct is present. It is the single most frequent cause of death from liver disease in early childhood. 50 to 60 percent of the children refer for transfer, liver transplantation as a result of rapidly progressing secondary biliary cirrhosis. The biliary atresia is of two types, perinatal type and fetal type. The perinatal type is about 80 to uh, 90 percent and uh, it is presumed that normal biliary tree is destroyed at birth. The jaundice develops within two weeks and no associated congenital anomaly is there. The etiology of perinatal uh, type is unknown but it is uh, linked with viral or autoimmune uh, uh, reactions and rheovirus, rotavirus and cytomegalovirus are linked with this perinatal type of the biliary atresia. The fetal type uh, is present in 10 to 20 percent of the cases and it is it presents with jaundice at birth or within first uh, a day or two days of the birth. There is associated cardiac or vascular malformation, sinus inverses, uh, situs inverses, polysplenia, and midgut malrotation. It is presumed that aberrant intrauterine development of the extra hepatic biliary tree is responsible for this type. On histology, the biductular proliferation, there is portal fibrosis, bile plugs into the bile duct and ductules, and there is parenchymal cholestasis. The disease is divided into three types. The type 1, the disease is limited to the common bile duct. In type 2, the disease is limited to the hepatic bile duct. And type 3, is uh, obstruction of the ducts above the porta hepatis. The affected individual is normal uh, in birth weight and postnatal weight gain also occur. The initially there are normal stool but the stool become acolic subsequently. The, uh, the child present with neonatal, with neonatal cholestasis and uh, the serum uh, bilirubin ranges from 6 to 12 mg per deciliter. The timing of biopsy is very important. The liver biopsy shows non-specific changes if uh, it is uh, less than 4 weeks. There is a fairly good sensitivity and specificity of the biopsy between 6 to 8 weeks but it is diagnostic after the 8 weeks of birth. The cirrhosis develops within 3 to 6 months if uh, this uh, condition is not recognized. Kasai procedure is adopted for type 1 and type 2 and for other the liver transplantation is recommended. Tumor of this hepatobiliary system are rare and uh, the common site among these rare tumors uh, within this uh, hepatobiliary system is the fundus of the gallbladder. The second most site is the uh, is the ampulla of water and uh, then the common bile duct, the lower end of the common bile duct especially, then the hepatic duct and the junction of the hepatic uh, ducts. So these uh, tumors of this hepatobiliary system frequently present with the obstructive jaundice. Many of the tumors for the gallbladder have been described from the heterotrophic tissues, carcinoid, fibromas, myomas, neuromas, hemangiomas and their malignant counterparts, adenoma that are tubular papillary or tubular papillary inflammatory polyps, adenomyces and carcinoma. Among all these, the frequent is the carcinoma, especially the adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder.
Gallbladder carcinoma is commonest malignancy of extrahepatic biliary system. About 6,000 cases are reported per annum in USA. Uh, this carcinoma exhibit geographic variation being common in northern India, Chile and Bolivia. In the United States, it is common in southwest region where the large Native American or Hispanic population are present and uh, the worldwide incidence is about 1 in 50,000 people and it is common in 7 decade of life and it is twice common in females and prognosis for this disease is very bad it is the less than 10 percent five it has a less than 10 percent five year survival rate in some region it is less less than three percent Beside age and ethnicity, gallstones are important risk factor for carcinoma gallbladder. Gallstones are present in 95% of the cases, but only 1-2% to of the people having gallstone develop carcinoma. Other risk factor is the chronic bacterial infection or parasitic infestation and this is more common in Asia and uh, some Driver mutations have been noted and these include gain of function aberrations in epidermal growth factor receptor gene family including HER2 and genes that encode uh, signaling pathways such as RAS and loss of function mutations uh, such as T53 tumor suppressor gene mutation uh, that is present in more than 50% of the cases and most of these uh, gallbladder cancer they exhibit Several precursor lesions have been described for the gallbladder carcinoma and uh, these give clue that uh, uh, this tumor arises in a stepwise fashion from dysplasia, metaplasia, dysplasia, uh, in situ lesions and then uh, invasive uh, lesions. Uh, the precursor lesions are flat in situ lesion with varying degree of dysplasia, the mass forming adenoma like lesions uh, such as intracholecystic papillary tubular neoplasm and intestinal metaplasia. Various histological types have been described uh, for this gallbladder carcinoma including adenocarcinoma, adenomas to carcinomas, adenosquamous carcinoma, the squamous cell carcinoma, intracystic or interductal papillary neoplasm with an associated invasive carcinoma, mucinous cystic neoplasm with an associated invasive carcinoma, undifferentiated carcinoma, neuroendocrine uh, or carcinoid tumors or mesenchymal tumors. Among all these varieties, the adenocarcinoma is the commonest variety. The common site of the tumor within the gallbladder is the fundus of the gallbladder. However, 20% of the tumors are present in the lateral wall also. The, there are two morphological patterns of uh, this tumor. One is infiltrating and another one is the exophytic uh, tumor. The infiltrating variety is more common and it present as irregular area of diffuse thickening or induration of part of the gallbladder wall or whole of the gallbladder wall and uh, as uh, it ulcerate also in deeper direction it results in formation of fistula the consistency is scarce or very firm the exophytic pattern as is uh, evident from this picture this grows into the lumen as an irregular cauliflower like mass and it also invade the wall of the gallbladder. The luminal portion may exhibit necrosis, hemorrhage or ulceration. Histologically, this gallbladder carcinoma is characterized by presence of malignant glands that are embedded in desmoplastic stroma. If uh, the cytologic ATP and stromal response is minimal, 
it is diagnosed by perineural and vascular invasion the tumor spreads both uh, through the uh, local infiltration and through lymphatic spread it uh, directly extend to the other organ through fistula formation or peritoneal or biliary spread while it metastasize through lymphatics to the liver porta hepatic lymph nodes git lung and ovaries so this is the photomicrograph which is showing the severely dysplastic lining epithelium of the gallbladder and glandular structures that are present within the muscular layer and uh, these are the features of adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder this abdominal ct scan is showing an irregular bright mass within the lower portion of the gallbladder marked by yellow arrow this mass on histology proved to be an adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder one staging system for the gallbladder carcinoma is nevens staging when it, the tumor is intramucosal only it is categorized as a stage one when there is involvement of the mucosa and muscularis it is categorized as a stage two uh, when there is involvement of all three layers it is categorized as a stage three and when the lymph node cystic lymph node is involved along with all three layers it is categorized as stage 4 and uh, when the liver is involved or any other organ metastasis is present it is a stage 5 the preoperative diagnosis for carcinoma gallbladder is exception and uh, seen on uh, seen only in 20% of the uh, cases. The patient present with symptom of cholelithiasis, abdominal pain, jaundice, anorexia, nausea, vomiting and sometimes weight loss. Sometimes it is uh, incidental finding when surgery is performed for symptomatic gallstones and uh, these cases have a good prognosis if the tumor is not widespread.